Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I hope everyone's having a good day today. Uh, before I get into the message for today, I wanted to mention one other thing about that mysterious object that was over in Washington State. I saw another a photograph of the object taken from a different angle today. And you see like a line of light, a bit like, almost looks like a beam of light or laser light or something, but <clears throat> somebody took the top of the photograph or something that you could see the thing from the top of the beam. And to me, it looks like a rocket or something sitting on the, the top of that or something. Looks to me like a rocket that was launched, but Somebody asked the Pentagon if they knew anything about it, uh, if, they, if it was a beam, a laser beam of light or anything that they were using or testing or something. And everybody said, you know, it's denied everything. So it's a big mystery what, it, what was it. But they, they took photographs of it. So uh, for you to see on Fox News, you could go to Fox News today and look at that and uh, decide for yourself. But to me, it looks like a rocket. Anyway, the Lord laid it upon my heart. Uh, I know everybody, uh, is, is, we're waiting, we're seeing Bible prophecies come to pass, and, you know, we're seeing the signs of Matthew 24 and coming to pass left and right and everything becoming more intense. And as we see everything intensifying and the shaking beginning and everything, you know, we know that it's getting closer to the time for him to return. But, uh, and everybody's anxious to, to go. But what the Lord's telling me is in this message to give is, uh, you know, let's take the Lord at his word while we're waiting for him uh, to return. Let's believe what his word says about us and our, our capabilities and our abilities and the things that uh, uh, the gifts and the promises he's given us in our word about what it is that uh, is possible that we can accomplish and do and then you know read that those promises in there and stuff and then be about you know the father's business and uh be about you know trying to win souls for the kingdom or something while we're waiting on him uh he just wanted me to give a few examples of scripture and then i got some scripture references I'm going to read a, a few scriptures that I wrote down, and then I've got all kinds of references. I may end up eventually having to do a second video uh, at a later date on this and, and get back to this idea about let's take the Lord at his word. He says in Matthew 19, 26, But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, But with men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. And he said, and the Lord said, if ye had faith as the grain of a mustard seed, ye might say unto the sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted by the sea, and it should obey you. In Matthew 16, 19, the Lord says, and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever shall be loosed on earth shall be loosed in heaven and uh several years back and many times since then uh, before i got started in this uh last december um, several times over the course of the years i've been told only that uh i I'll, i will give unto you the keys of the kingdom and i'm told that but it, he doesn't really explain to me what he's talking about. But here in the scripture, he kind of gives an indication of what he's talking about. And uh, so we can declare things, you know, we can uh, state things and declare things. And then they'll come to pass. Uh, some people, you know, some people in the body, in his body can do that. And if possibly anyone can do it if they simply exercise the faith and they, they read these promises and they see what's possible and they act upon them. You know, that old saying is faith is a fact, but faith is an act. You know, we have to do things. We have to do something. We can't just say something and be a, 
uh, you know, hearer of the word all the time, but we need to be doers of the word. We can't just learn and hear about the word or something. We need to start doing the word. Only then is anything going to count. In Second Chronicles, uh, King Hezekiah, it says of him, uh, there's uh, in the 32nd chapter, I'm not going to read the whole chapter, but uh, just one thing about Hezekiah, and in every good work that he began in the service of the house of God, he did it with all his heart. He did it with all his heart and prospered. He did it with all his heart, and because he did it with all of his heart, he prospered. Um, Isaiah 54, 17 says, uh, No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Uh, and every tongue that shall rise up against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. Uh, the mockers and the scoffers? Well, according to Isaiah 54, 17, he says that every tongue that shall rise up against you in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servant of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. You were righteous, the, uh, the Lord says, but our righteousness is of, of him. It's not self-righteousness. It's not righteousness that we have in ourselves. It's righteousness that we have in him. Now, there's some facts that uh, I want to try to get across here on the same subject just to make the point. The first uh, idea here. You are who God says you are. Who, who does he say you are? Who does the God say that we are? He says that we're a new creation in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5.17. He says that we are joint heir with Christ in Romans 8.17. He says we're redeemed from the con uh, kingdom of darkness in Colossians 1.13. He says we're more than a conqueror in Romans 8.37. He says we're to reign in life in Revelation 5.10. He says we are blessed with all spiritual blessings in Christ in Ephesians 1.3. He says we are for miracles, signs, and wonders in Isaiah 8.18 and Mark 16 and verses 17 and 18. He says we're too dangerous for any demonic destruction, Isaiah 54.17. He says we're a success and not a failure in 2 Chronicles 32, 21 and Joshua 1, 8. He says we are number one wherever we go in Hebrews 1, 9 and Deuteronomy 7, 8, uh, 7, uh, 6, uh, uh, excuse me. That's who the Lord says we are. That's just a few of the scriptures of who the Lord says each and every one of us are that are born again and, and uh, of Christ and have the Holy Spirit uh, dwelling within us. We've accepted him as Lord and Savior. That's who he says we are. That's just a few examples because there's more scriptures in, in his word that could be found besides those. Uh, the second point is you have what God says you have. What does God say that we have as born-again believers uh, with the Holy Spirit-filled uh, person that's accepted him as Lord and Savior? What, is it, what does he say we have? First of all, he says we have life. Whosoever hath, that hath the Son hath life. 1 John 5, 12. You have light. You are the light of the world. St. Matthew 5, 14. You have freedom. If the Son shall set you free, you will be free indeed. John 8, 36. You have joy. Your joy no man taketh away from you. John 16, 22. You have everything. God with Christ also shall give you all things free. Romans 8.32 You have liberty. Where his spirit is, there is liberty. 2 Corinthians 3.17 You have peace. And the peace of God which passes all understanding shall be yours in Christ. Philippians 4.7 You are planned for. I know the plans I have for you. Plans of good. Jeremiah 29.11 you have provision. My God shall supply all your needs in Philippians 4.19. You have a future. I go to prepare a place for you, St. John 14.2.
You have the whole world asking me of the ends of the earth and things that are yet to happen, Psalm 2.8 and Isaiah 45.11. That's why that sometimes we can see ahead what's coming ahead on the road because, uh, you know, we maybe we have the gift of knowledge, the gift of prophecy. And then, of course, in Joel, remember that in the last days, he's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh and we're going to have dreams and visions, and that's what's happening here on YouTube with a lot of the videos where people are, you know, sharing their dreams, they're telling people about their visions, and, um, you know, things that are that they're being shown by the Lord are coming. And, I mean, there's just all kinds of this stuff happening right now, which confirms, you know, what the book of Joel says was going to happen right before he returned. And then lastly... You can do what God says you can do. You can do all things, Philippians 4.13. You can bind and loose, Matthew 16.19 and 18.18. You can decree anything and it'll happen, Job 22.28. You can have all your desires as long as they're, and when it comes to that, of course, they have to be godly. You know, they can't be ungodly desires. Uh as long as they're within, you know, as long as there's something positive and good and they're within the will of the Lord, you can have all your desires, Psalm 37, 4 and 145, 16 through 19. And so uh, he just wanted me to get this point across while we're sitting and waiting for him to return. And, you know, nobody knows that day or hour is, is right. And the wait could be a little bit longer than we think it is. But even if it was next week and we had a, we just had seven more days to go, all we had was seven days to go, let's be about the Father's business and let's be busy. And let's be concerned about un, un, uh, lost souls. And really, uh, when it comes to the doctrine of predestination, there may be some, you know, because you have that scripture where it says, well, many are called, but few are chosen. Well, when somebody is called, like I was called, I had a calling. And um, going back a long, many, many years ago, when the, and one of these days I'll share it in a, in a video. You know, I saw a vision of uh, something that occurred and took place you know, before I came down into my mother's womb, there was something that happened, and I was shown what happened. And I will, you know, tell that in some future video about that incident. But anyway, apparently I had the calling, and, and I was given a message before I was born. And, of course, when my mother got pregnant with me, then she said that while she was pregnant with me, before I was born that the Lord told her that one day, uh, you know, I would uh, preach because I was called. And so at some point in my life, uh, you know, I would begin to do something for him because I had a calling on my life. And she was told that before, while, while she was pregnant with me before I was born. And I was told about that many years ago, but when I was, when she first revealed it to me, I wasn't that enthusiastic about it, but after so many years, I, you know, came around to the idea that, you know, I was going to do what the Lord was going to call me to do. Many are called, but few are chosen. You're called, and then you become chosen at the point where you say yes to the Lord about the calling. That is at that point where you become chosen. But as far as salvation goes, that is open to, if you go back and look in the Word, that's that's open and, and read the book of Romans. It's open to, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So if people are out there and they haven't made the decision for him today, there's hope for any one of those people. There's no such thing as everything is predetermined or something when it comes to souls that are going to be part of the kingdom of heaven. And uh, there's no such thing as that. The Bible don't teach that. 
I don't know where the idea comes from, but it's not in his word. Salvation is open to anyone that calls upon his name, confesses, believes in their heart, and confesses with their mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, and they'll be saved. And, and there's plenty of other scriptures in there. Uh, so everything is not predetermined. Uh, so the message just today is uh, we have all kinds of promises in the book and all kinds of possibilities. And I don't know why we don't. He, his message to me is to rise up. He, he wants to see the body of Christ rise up now in boldness. And he wants to see uh, the body of Christ, you know, put on the whole armor like the book of Ephesians says and go out into the uh, get ready for battle. Let's get ready for battle. Let's suit up and put on our whole armor and get ready for battle. And let's go on the offense and be on the offense instead of on the defense. And like his word says, it re resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Just stay in this word every single day and sit there and quote. If you feel like you're under attack, go in there and uh, go in there and you know go to the book of Isaiah 54:17. And read it out loud into the air. Read it and remind the devil, no weapon that is formed against me is going to prosper. And every tongue that shall rise up against me in judgment, I'm going to condemn. And this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And the righteousness is in me, says the Lord. No weapon that's formed against me is going to prosper. Speak it out. Speak it to the enemy. Get into the word. Speak the word to the enemy. This is what the word says, devil. No weapon formed against me is going to prosper. And so we need to go on the offense. I mean, that was the that was the only thing there. We saw that thing with North Korea and, and Trump and that peace treaty. And I don't know how all that's going to come about, but we do know that when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction is going to come. And so some of these things, you know, there will be peace treaties and all this other stuff. But the thing, but the word says that, uh, you know, the word still says what's going to, what's coming. And I don't think that any of these treaties are going to change that. So um, I started to do the video today on my phone. And then I had to go and do the video on the, you know, on my PC here because after a couple minutes it cut out. And I think sometimes when that happens, because if I delete the data that's on the in the camera, that should open up the thing so that the video part of the uh, thing is going to run longer. And there's really no reason that the camera should shut off like after two minutes. So when I started to do this message and give this message, the uh, phone shut off. So I decided to come on here in, in this uh, uh, PC here and, and do the video and upload it uh, and get it out because obviously it's something that, you know, he wants to make everybody aware of that, you know, we should be bold in him. We should quote the word and what he's saying, what who we are in him and you know, what uh, abilities and powers and abilities and gifts we have, let's exercise them and use them because if you have been given him, he's given you gifts and things to use and to serve him, but unless we, we use every single thing that he gives us, it's it's useless, it's worthless. We, we have to take action. Like he said, speak to the sycamine tree. You know, speak to it. You know, it's always it always is about an action. It's always about taking actions. We can get it. He can give us an idea. He can give us the command. He can say, Tom, come and, you know, do this video today and put it out there for the people and tell them, you know, encourage them and tell them to be bold and tell them to start searching his scriptures for all of his promises and and the gifts he's going to give you to serve him, and that you're not alone, and you have the Holy Spirit in you. You're not by yourself. He's with you, and he's in you, and he'll do the work. And he just asks you to be willing, you know, to have a willing spirit uh, to go where he tells you to go, or 
do what he tells you to do and, and be present and take yourself to the place that he calls you to go to, but he'll do the work. He'll do the work. He does all the work. It's him that's doing the work. We're just uh, partnering with him. But it's his Holy Spirit in us that's actually doing the work. It's not us. We, all, we always got to remember that, and it's easy to forget it. But this isn't about us. This isn't about me. This is about, this channel is about Jesus. It's not about me. And uh, I'm here to raise and glorify and lift up his name. And uh, he said, if my name is lifted up, I will draw all souls unto me. If my name is lifted up somewhere, I'll draw souls unto me. And, uh, you know, time, yes, time is running out, and we're seeing the signs. And Psalm 83 war could take place tomorrow. Uh, you know, we're, we're seeing stuff shaping up here. It looks like, you know, something's going to break out there in the Middle East soon. <clears throat> and yet at the same time, if you notice from the last, let's say, week or so, or two or three days, I don't know if everybody else out here gets that sense or something, but it almost seems like there's been a pause in, in the action for a few days. And what, of course, we still see the volcanic eruptions there in Hawaii, and we still see increased activity in Yellowstone. There's still things going on, but what I'm speaking about specifically is like what's going on in the Middle East. It seems like there's little you know, like a little pause there, a uh, uh, intermission or something. Like people are taking a time out or something to get things set up. Uh, but uh, I still, you know, I still feel what I feel that, you know, something's coming. Something's coming there real soon. And it'll take everybody by surprise. One will go to sleep, wake up in the morning, and all of a sudden, you know, all hell will have broke loose. That's what happened in 67, and that's what happened in 73. I saw that stuff. Just overnight, all of a sudden, it was on the news. Here's a war going on. You know, without, and before that, I hadn't heard nothing about it. Of course, I was young. I was young at the time. I, You know, I was a kid. I wasn't, you know, but just all of a sudden, I'm hearing, you know, here, here the, here's this war broke out. And um, so uh, that concludes today's message. Um, I thank everyone for your subscriptions and your positive comments to the channel. I'm going to try to uh, come on every single day if possible, but sometimes, you know, just, I, some unexpected things come up or like over the, this past weekend, I wasn't really feeling good because it, the weather was still below normal temperature-wise. But finally today, uh, the weather is starting to warm up and become more normal summer-like weather for this area. And so uh, we might be over that, but like last weekend and last week, sometimes in the, the uh, overnight or something, it'd get below 40s and stuff. You know, that's not, you know, June weather here. So the weather has been odd, and of course the weather is all messed up all over the planet. We all know that. That's another sign. Um, anyway, that's all for now. Uh, God bless you all, and uh, thank you for watching and tuning in.